Good evening, and welcome to Have I Got News For You. I'm Jane Leaves. In the news this week, at the Labour Party conference, the announcement that McDonald's are to scrap supersized meals gets a mixed reaction. <laughs> In Kashmir, as training continues at a rebel camp, recruits refuse to let the shortage of guns get them down. <laughs> at a reception in Buckingham Palace, the Queen notes with regret that the Prime Minister hasn't brought his wife this time. <laughs> With Paul Merton tonight, a comedian who once said, I look forward to the day when people younger than me slag me off as an old fart from the BBC. So please welcome BBC old fart, Mark Steele. <laughs> On Ian Hislop's team is a current affairs presenter whose on-screen colleague, according to the papers, leers over her so much that he might fall down her cleavage. <laughs> He probably fancies her, but he's too scared to tell her. I bet they end up getting married. <laughs> Please welcome Daisy Sampson. <laughs> we start with round one. You may have all missed this. Um, this is the American election. That's uh, who's got my watch. Have you got my watch? <laughs> Just reading the Bible, checking if there's anything he's missed. <laughs> Yes. So this is the American election, yeah, isn't it? Which was uh, uh, Bush's uh, thrill. This is the first time he's actually won an election. So he's... <laughs> it's a new experience for him, isn't it? Yeah. It's very touching, that phone call at the, at the end. Osama mm. bin Laden ringing up, saying, well done. Yeah. <laughs> Hope the video helped, you know. <laughs> One of the things Bush said about the video, he was saying, but it was professionally made. I thought, well, of course it was professionally made. He's the head of this international <laughs> net. He's not going to make one where he gets his beard caught in a mangle and he <laughs> sends it off to Jeremy Beadle. What are you talking about? <laughs> How could he have lost? And it's because Kerry was so stiff. And even his concession speech was all, well, I hope there's unity for the American people. Didn't, why didn't he go out and go, what have you done? He's mental! <laughs> Did you stay up all night? I did stay. I was miserable. I know it was wrong, but it was a stupid mm -hmm. thing to do, but I did stay up to live. And at which points did you know it turned over? Uh, well, I didn't turn over. I didn't think, <laughs> well, it's quarter past four, there's bound to be something on Cartoon Network. <laughs> <laughs> I was getting more interesting. I thought you were on most of the night. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I was at the American Embassy all night. I bet if you see Bush and Rumsfeld now, though, they must think they can get away with anything. Mm. There'll be, like, couples with holiday brochures going, oh, where shall we invade next? <laughs> Cuba looks nice. We haven't been there for a while. France. <laughs> Did anyone see any of the alleged dirty tricks that have been taking place in the various swing states? There was a leaflet distributed in Ohio saying that due to a timetable alteration, anyone intending to vote Democratic should leave it till Wednesday. <laughs> Everyone tell me, what was unusual about the way a gentleman called Leroy Chow voted this week? Oh, he was in space, wasn't he? That's exactly right. He yeah. voted via email. And do we know how he voted? Via email. No. <laughs> <laughs> and what was the astonishing result of the night according to the Times? They voted a psychopathic idiot to run the world. <laughs> yeah, no, in Idaho, where Mike Crapo, a Republican... <laughs> the Marx brother had never made it. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say his name was? His name is Mike Crapo. Well, you can't accuse them of being dishonest, no. can you? <laughs> Apparently, a Republican and a Mormon scooped 99.5% <laughs> of the votes. His Democratic opponent was Scott McClure, whose name did not appear on the ballot. <laughs> Which usually reliable election prediction method came up trumps again this time, according to The Independent? This might be something for Mark, actually. I've been told this subject interests you. Revolutionary socialism? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I meant Paul. This subject interests you. <laughs> It's going rather so well, well yes, yes, it was. <laughs> yes. I've no idea. It's the petometer. The theory is the candidate with the most pets wins. And I've been told you like animals, so. <laughs> well, strictly speaking, the court case hasn't come up. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, Theodore Roosevelt had 34, JFK 29, yep. Kerry 2, and Bush 3. A cat, a dog, and a long-horned cow called Ophelia. <laughs> That doesn't interest me in this <laughs> It's a rather interesting spelling of the name Ophelia, O-F-E-L-I-A. Ah. <laughs> well, that goes with the, the Bush motto, which was the three Fs, wasn't it? Yeah. Faith, flag, family and... That's philosophy. Three. Philosophy. <laughs> <laughs> but they seem to fall for it, the Americans. Yeah. You well, know they are not. Why do I they fall for I, it? You know, it, it does generally seem to be the middle of the country and the, the people around the edges get out a bit more, I think. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so, Jane, have you met any of these American politicians? I have met Clinton, yes. I was in the White House in the Oval Office. And yeah, we don't need to know the deal. <laughs> stickers were once again a big issue in the campaign. You could take your pick of hamsters for Kerry. <laughs> Don't be a girly man, vote Republican. <laughs> or lick Bush. <laughs> My personal favourite was a t-shirt uh, with a naked woman with a shaved nether regions that read, uh, read my lips, no bush in 2005. <laughs> Of course, during the campaign, the various Bushisms caught on camera have been endlessly replayed. Obviously, there's no need to play them again. But, <laughs> hey, what the hell? <laughs> I don't think we need to be subliminable about the differences. <laughs> I don't think there's a plot to try to put subliminable messages in the <laughs> Prisons like Abu Ghraib. Don't misunderestimate me. me. Don't misunderstand me. <laughs> And who could forget this? Our enemies are innovative and resourceful. And so are we. They never stop thinking about new ways to harm our country and our people. And neither do we. And this may be a new one for you. Bush is confused as to the role of gynecologists in the U.S. <laughs> Too many good docs are getting out of business. Too many OBGYNs aren't able to practice their, their love with women all across this country. <laughs> Either I'm getting cleverer or the world is getting stupider. <laughs> played in America then. These oh, are played constantly, all the time constantly. in America. Yeah. And, and people go, yeah, mm -hmm. he's a man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> They'd be better off with Bagpuss, to be honest with you. <laughs> Bagpuss would have done better. Yeah. Bagpuss would have been great. <laughs> would have carried <laughs> Ohio. Yeah. <laughs> Bin Laden video came out, I thought, you'd look at that and you'd think, oh my God, he's still alive. We'd better get someone who can get rid of him. Mm -hmm. But in America they thought, look, Bin Laden's still around. Let's get the guy who didn't get him again. <laughs> But according to Michael Moore, the Bin Laden family and the Bush family have big political connections going way back over oil and stuff, don't they? Mm. So, I mean, you know, Bin Laden knows that Bush isn't trying to catch him. And they need each other. Yeah. You've got to have a madman on both sides. Yeah. <laughs> it's like two Johnnies. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, it's holy jihad from me. It's holy jihad from me. Have you seen how one side of his mouth goes down and one side of his mouth goes up? And the body language experts say that that's why he wins elections, because he appeals to absolutely everybody at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> that's just James. James. People who like guys who smile, yeah. people who like guys who frown. People who like a serious guy. <laughs> the the Democrats should have put up a Gurner. They have Gordon Brown. <laughs> In the interest of balance, let's... Oh, let's, forget balance. Yes. <laughs> let's not forget the soundbite that probably lost it all for Kerry. I'm John Kerry, and I'm reporting for duty. Dismissed. <laughs> <laughs> this is, of course, the American election. If anyone's wondering <laughs> how the American people can be so stupid as to vote for Bush again, remember this is a country that believes Daphne's brother comes from Manchester. <laughs> <laughs> According to the Daily Mail, the BBC sent 188 staff to cover the American elections. I can't believe that the BBC would spend money flying people all the way across the Atlantic just for a television program. <laughs> Thank you.
Round two this week looks at tabloid news from an unusual angle. A selection of recent stories to identify by means of a picture clue. Buzz in as soon as you recognize the story. It's Spam. <laughs> Making a comeback. It disappeared a bit in the 80s yes. and now it's become a very uh, a sexy, sort of groovy <laughs> thing. So now people say, yes, we want spam. Spam's coming back. Everybody loves spam. It's waterproof and you can get it to seal your roof. <laughs> <laughs> that is correct. Actually, is it? yes. Partly, <laughs> partly. The reason they're relaunching it, though, um, according to the Daily Mail. Is it because of all the spam you get on internet? They reckon this is a free advertising. That's exactly Spam, right. spam, every time you open your. All right. <laughs> also, it's maps backwards. <laughs> Does that confuse people? Yes. <laughs> was this me or was it a backward map? I can't think <laughs> of it. Do you know where um, spam yeah. is most popular? Yeah. Where? <laughs> Northampton. <laughs> no, it's actually the Pacific Island of Guam where each person eats 16 cans. Really? Yeah. Strong teeth? <laughs> <laughs> 16, 16 cans, yes. Is it popular in the UK? Very popular. Well, since you left. <laughs> we eat nothing else nowadays. <laughs> there is, in fact, a spam fan club with 2,500 members. Suspiciously round figure. <laughs> <laughs> and what is the highlight of the year for the UK spam club? Um, meeting yeah, people, got... going out of the house. <laughs> it's actually the Spammy Awards, of course. Of course. <laughs> yes, and do you want to hear about this year's winner? Yes, please. Yes. <laughs> Um, it's a uh, Jorman Odense was awarded Spam Chef of the Year for what? Cooking Spam? <laughs> uh, spam Wonton and Cutlet of Spam. <laughs> the Express declared, the American wartime food is back. And with Bush back in the White House, so is American wartime. <laughs> the Independent helpfully printed some recipes for its readers, including Spam in the Hole. <laughs> Presumably, the full recipe reads, dig hole in garden, bury it in a spam. <laughs> Next picture. Baked beans. <laughs> They're relaunching this week. <laughs> Is it that in the island of St. Lucia, they eat 45 tins of this a day? <laughs> Did Derbyshire housewife finds human head in tin of beans? <laughs> This is from university students who haven't got their grant that hasn't come through. Yes. And they've been paid off in tins of beans. You haven't got any money, add these beans. There's a bit of spam around the back of your interest. <laughs> <laughs> yes, these are students from Aberystwyth University. Um... And will the local traders accept beans in lieu of money? <laughs> <laughs> How else are students being needled this week? Are they injecting spam straight into their system? <laughs> <laughs> it's too lazy to chew it, they're just straight in. <laughs> No. As they watch Countdown. Yeah. <laughs> They're having mumps jabs. Because yes. they missed out. Lots of students getting mumps. Yes. According to one newspaper, mumps is a viral illness which can result in young men lying in bed all day with swollen <laughs> sex. <laughs> They're students, right? <laughs> Next well, mumps for most of the 1980s. <laughs> that you didn't know what to call it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next picture. So there's been a fire at the Branston Pickle Factory. So people are now selling jars of Branston Pickle on eBay for 50 quid. Yes. Because there's a, there's a shortage of pickles in this uh, pickled, uh, well, pickled whatever it is, pickled Branston. <laughs> <laughs> He's a bloke who runs Virgin, isn't he? <laughs> Anyway, there's a, out of there's a shortage of him. There's a shortage of Richard Branson to turn into pickles. And so, um, he's down to his last foot, apparently. <laughs> so, for the last 20 years, they've been using him to turn him into pickles. Um, and eventually, the human body can only take so many pickles being taken out of it by force. And now he's had to retire, so that there may be a shortage of pickles. There's no more pickles, basically. He said, look, I've had enough. Try spam. <laughs> You're exactly right. There was a devastating 12-hour fire. <laughs> 
Richard Branson pickle factory last week. No, uh, yes. You oh, but right. not about Richard Branson. No, not about Richard Branson, but right. you're right about the fire and okay. uh, yeah, and the effect that it's having, according to the Daily Mail. How is... can pickle burn down? It's, it's wet by nature. Uh, highly flammable. Is it highly flammable? I think you use it to put out fire. Yeah. yeah. Just how many weeks' supply is left in the UK? Uh, three weeks left. No, two. Really? Yes. It's worse than I thought. Yes. <laughs> to deal with a shortage like this is rush out tomorrow and buy as many jars as possible. <laughs> that way there'll be plenty for everybody. As a result of the fire, the factory was completely gutted, as were hundreds of ploughmen <laughs> who had to go without their lunch. <laughs> All right, next picture. <laughs> That's the Japanese spam advertising campaign. <laughs> Spams, are you ready, darling? <laughs> this is about the greatest chat-up line in the world. Exactly. And what is it? It's, um, it's something like, this time next year we will be laughing. Exactly right, yes. This time next year we will be laughing together. Does it work for you, Daisy? Weak at the knees. Yes. <laughs> What's the best chat-up line you've ever heard? This time next year you'll be eating Spam. <laughs> <laughs> I've had a few. Um, I'll give you a guess who said this to me. Um, Dance on the table for me and uh, come back to my trailer. No one need know. Is it girly men? Yes. <laughs> Arnie. 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 Say that. Yes, he did. The Groper. The Groper, yeah. Yeah, that played well, though, California. Mm -hmm. He won anyway. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Vote for the Groper. Yeah. <laughs> Good man. I'll be back to my trailer. Is he here? Is he here? Is he coming? Is he here? Just like that. <laughs> Is he signing in? Where is he? I heard him. I heard him. So you, did you hear him then? It was uncanny. It was uncanny. Like, <laughs> the ultimate chat up line has been <laughs> developed by a panel of experts in Japan. If the chat up line is successful, the next decision is what to do on the first date. Enjoy a pizza <laughs> together or a night of unbridled passion. As this silver tongued smoothie puts it, their fate will be in each other's hands as they decide whether to share or to shaft. <laughs> According to a survey out this week, one thing that does make a man appear sexier is the ability to speak a foreign language. Apparently, a second tongue makes you more attractive to women. <laughs> yes, I can see how that might work. <laughs> Next picture. That's the Queen. <laughs> we get a point for that. Yeah. <laughs> Getting, oh no, I've forgotten my crown. <laughs> Where is she? Is she in, in Germany? Germany? She's in Germany, yes. And Going back to her roots. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and, and do you know where the Queen has been staying whilst in Germany? Yes, in the Führerbunker. <laughs> <laughs> she has been staying at the Adlon Hotel. Um, it was Hitler's favourite hotel, apparently. Also infamous for what? Does it get more infamous than being Hitler's favourite hotel? <laughs> what, the devil stays over, does he? <laughs> This is the hotel where Michael Jackson dangled his son over the balcony. I think she'd like to do it with Charles. Then <laughs> <laughs> you won't marry that woman. You know, with Michael Jackson, there's something people haven't thought about, is the, uh, the impact that his case has had on other paedophiles that live Hang on a near second, him. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just stop you legally when you... <laughs> When you say Michael Jackson, then you say other paedophiles. <laughs> it might be suggesting uh, something that people haven't thought about with Michael Jackson's forthcoming case. <laughs> Whatever the outcome. <laughs> He's a paedophile, did you know? <laughs> and what has the German press been urging her to do? Apologise. Mm -hmm. Apologise for the two wars they started. <laughs> Actually, apologise for the bombing of Dresden yeah, during the yeah. war. The Daily Express informed its readers, during the war, the Queen, then Princess Elizabeth, was made a sergeant in the Auxiliary Territorial Service. It wasn't the highest rank achieved by a royal. Princess Michael made it all the way to Übergruppenführer. <laughs> Round three is the odd one out round. Ian and Daisy, your favourites are John Kerry, Mr Spock, 
Ken Shuttleworth and Salvador Dali. It must depend on who Ken Shuttleworth is. Mm. Is he gherkin chap? Oh, the architect. Yes. Right. Ken Shuttleworth's the only one who's not listened to John Kerry play the guitar. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Ken Shuttleworth, there was a, a piece about how he'd been airbrushed out of a photo or moved in a photo. And Kerry was in those Jane Fonda photos and then wasn't. Yes. Or the other way around. So they've, they've all had photos doctored. Except Dali, who deliberately doctored photos of himself. <laughs> no, he's the old one out because he's had one of his paintings doctored. That's but exactly right. That yeah. makes him the old one out. Right. Yes, you're right. They've all been victims of photo doctoring, except for Salvador Dali, who had one of his paintings doctored. By? By his friend and agent, John Peter Moore. Um, he was this week ordered to pay £700,000 compensation to his estate for having altered one of Dali's paintings. Draw a little moustache on it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and of course, uh, John Kerry. There was a photograph during the election, a campaign of John Kerry and Jane Fonda together, which turned out to be faked, as he said. Is this them as a Carpenter's tribute band? <laughs> <laughs> According to the Daily Express, it's cheap photo software that is to blame for the outbreak of photo doctoring. And it's surprisingly easy to use. For example, it took me about ten minutes to knock this one up. He was very good. <laughs> he was very good on the night. Yeah. Ken Shuttleworth. Ian, tell me about Ken Shuttleworth and make it interesting. <laughs> Lord Foster and this man designed this enormous um, protuberance over London called the Gherkin. They were a team and they had some sort of picture or photograph or portrait done and he's been airbrushed out of it because they don't like him anymore. Yes, because yes. he found a team photo in which he'd been standing next to Foster, had been doctored and he'd been moved further away. And... <laughs> Where's Trotsky? <laughs> <laughs> the answer is that they have all been victims of doctored photos, except for Salvador Dali, one of whose paintings was doctored. Toward the end of his life, Dali lost the will to live and according to one biography, at one point, he deliberately dehydrated himself as a suicide attempt. Not a great way to commit suicide, though it does speed up the cremation. <laughs> <laughs> On one occasion, Star Trek bosses famously airbrushed out Mr. Spock's pointed ears, but astonishingly left William Shatner's acting untouched. <laughs> Paul and Mark, your four are George mm. W. Bush, yes. Teresa Hines Carey, Holland and the Houses of Parliament. Well, one possible connection that springs to mind is that the Heinz Kerry woman, uh, she is, of course, from the Heinz family, isn't she? She's, you know, the, the tomato ketchup people. Mm -hmm. And the Houses of Parliament do appear on a bottle of HP sauce. So is that, is that the right sort of area? You're in the right direction, Oh, yes. good, OK. Yeah. And, and George is... Bush did an advert for tea, PG tips. <laughs> <laughs> New Orbits on our play. Was it that one? <laughs> Um, their names are on sauce bottles, or their images are on sauce bottles. Uh, George Bush must have been on a bottle of, I don't know, bullshit brown sauce. <laughs> I'm too stupid to use anything else. Um, <laughs> so I say Bush is the odd one. What do you think? Bush is the odd one out? What do you reckon? No, I think that um, Theresa Hines Kerry will be the odd one out. All the other ones will have been on food, and she's from a family that... Um, that makes food. That makes food. Mm, yes. They've all had a source named after them, apart from Teresa Hines Carey, who married into the Hines family. Uh -huh. So Teresa Hines Carey is the only Hollandaise, is that? Hollandaise sauce, yes. yes. George W. Bush's sauce is called W. Ketchup. <laughs> Are they still making it? Yes, <laughs> yes there it is. Oh, and how many flavours does W ketchup come in? Four flavours, because there's four bottles there. <laughs> right, yeah, one would be smoky oaky, one would be um, oaky smoky. <laughs> Okey cokey. Okey cokey. <laughs> <laughs> and karaoke. <laughs> no, W ketchup comes in one flavour American. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the W ketchup provides nutritional information for its American consumers based on a daily diet of 2,000 calories. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> the inventor of HP sauce died in 1912. Sadly, his funeral was delayed as the pallbearers repeatedly shook and slapped the hearse to try and get the coffin out. <laughs> we finish, as always, on the missing words round. This week's guest publication is the Icelandic Sheep Breeders of North America <laughs> newsletter. <laughs> so here we go with Minister for What Should Know What.
Schools should know alphabet. <laughs> <laughs> Four Icelandic sheep should know where Reykjavik is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Minister for Agriculture should know onions. It's Minister for Fruit should know his no, onions. onions. Ah. But onions aren't fruit, so it doesn't make any sense at all. <laughs> Perhaps they've been reclassified. I'd like onions to be reclassified as discotheques. Yeah. <laughs> I think that would help a lot. <laughs> you, know, you have to have a couple of bouncers in front of each onion with yeah. a big blue bit of thick rope yeah. going, wait! Yeah. <laughs> There's only four people in that onion. Yeah. <laughs> Go on, no more, that's your lot. Just say... <laughs> It doesn't give me any pleasure, but I just felt compelled to say it. <laughs> Next, Dr. Thorstein Olafsson demonstrates what? The self inflating you. <laughs> <laughs> the, wh whis the whistling ram. <laughs> demonstrates Icelandic Scrabble. Mm. Yeah. The answer is new insemination technique. This is from the Icelandic Sheep Breeders of North America newsletter. The article states, the procedure is more than placing semen into the right place at the right time. The occasional bunch of flowers would be nice too. <laughs> and finally, what is a hideous way to lose sheep? Um, giving them a map that's false. <laughs> A backward map, given him a given <laughs> span, which is Max backward, is a hideous way to lose sheep. Trapped in a pickle factory overnight, <laughs> the flames licking around his never quarters. <laughs> Blindfolding them and putting them in the back of a car and then letting them out and they don't know where they are. <laughs> and then the police have to come and they say, well, I heard a church bell near a railway station <laughs> and then they piece out where it was. The actual answer is bloat. <laughs> That's just ridiculous. <laughs> so the final scores are Paul and Mark, you have eight. Oh. Ian and Daisy, nine. Hey. Well, it's a I told you I'd win with you. <laughs> On which note we say thank you to our panelists, Ian Hislop and Daisy Sampson, Paul Merton and Mark Steele. And I leave you with news that in Kidderminster, a woman finds out what's been affecting the spin speed on her washing machine. <laughs> in Cape Town, a suspect in a major case catches sight of his prospective cellmate in the shower. <laughs> and in Washington, the newly elected president tries to heal the wounds of a divisive campaign.